I just remember you got plenty of of uh, oh, we're good. more on right there. Yeah, we're good. Okay, good. Have to run both for five minutes. Go for it. <laughs> Okay, good morning everyone. I'm Louis Polito with the Belmar Public Library. Welcome to another Author Time event that we have over here. Uh, a series of events where we bring authors for, uh, for our patrons to, hear to, to meet and learn about their books. Uh, today we have Jennifer Clearwaters and Cynthia O'Connell here. They're here to talk about their book, The Elevation Principles. All right. Jennifer is a licensed professional counselor, yoga instructor, Reiki master, and integrative nutrition health coach. She formerly worked in public education for over 20 years as a teacher, school counselor, director of school counseling services, and college professor. And Jennifer owns a private practice for behavioral health and wellness in New Jersey. Cynthia is a retired specialist professor from the Educational Counseling Department at Monmouth University. Previously, she worked in public education as a teacher, coach, school counselor, and director of counseling services K-12. She has trained students, educators, and other professionals in mindfulness and meditation. Ladies, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. And from there, I'm going to pass it on to them, and off they go. Okay. Thank you. All right. I'm just going to grab my mic, because I'm going to start. <laughs> go. Thanks. All right, uh, where does this go? Little clip. Sorry. That's okay. <laughs> Thank you. All right, so. It's a community job. Yeah, so <laughs> we, you know, we have to help each other, right? Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is a little centering before we even get started. Mm -hmm. So I just want you to put your feet flat on the floor. And if you have something on your lap or a pen in your hand, just put it down. And so this is a grounded position, and we talk about that in the book. And then I want you to just roll your shoulders up to your ears. Maybe you take a breath in through your nose, out through your nose. Great. Let's do one more of those because it just feels good to me. Inhale. And exhale it all the way out. So your crown of the head is reaching towards the ceiling. And you can close your eyes or just have your gaze down, doesn't matter, just to go a little inward, getting away from everything it took to come here this morning. Maybe noticing your body for the first time today because you were so busy rushing around. And we're gonna take two breaths together. We're gonna inhale through the nose for the count of four. We're gonna exhale to the count of six. And as you inhale, I want you to feel that belly rise a little bit. And as you exhale, it should deflate. So we're gonna inhale, two, three, four, all the way to the belly, and exhale nice and slow. Two, three, four, five, Six, let's try that again. Inhale, three, four, and exhale, two, three, four, five, six. So today, I'm gonna set an intention for our little author talk, and that's to have beginner's mind. In the beginner's mind, the possibilities are endless, in the expert's mind, they are few. And I want you to think about a generous act that you did this morning for someone else. Maybe you held the door, maybe you smiled. <laughs> That's okay, distractions. That's what life's all about. Maybe you um, made breakfast for someone or got them a cup of coffee or, or made the coffee. Whatever it is that you did, the generous act. And then I'm gonna ask you to put a smile on your face, even if you don't feel like it. And your body doesn't know the difference. Excellent. And then finally, I'm gonna ask you to think about what went well yesterday in your day. One thing that went well. All right. And then whenever you're ready, you can open your eyes if they were closed, do a great big overhead stretch, just because I want to. Excellent. We feel like making a stretch though, right? You move your body the way your body wants to move. Let's do a little crescent moon. Doesn't matter which side you go to, and let's go to the other side. All right. So that was about three minutes. Mm -hmm. How does everybody feel? Great. 
maybe a little different than when you first walked in. That's all it takes. So that was a little example of a contemplative practice that is core for our book. Yeah. All right. So, so our book, um, The Elevation Principles, we, this came from years and years of Cindy and I teaching places, talking, giving presentations, um, me having a practice for therapy, and us teaching at Mammoth. And it's techniques, and we feel like we know we we've learned so much over the years that at some point we were like, okay, how can we share this with people? So I had called Cindy, 2021, January 1st, and I called and I said, you know what, <laughs> we're going to write a book. And she said, okay, what are we writing about? <laughs> and we didn't even really know. So at first we thought maybe we're going to write a class, a curriculum for Mammoth, or something like that. But then we started to commit to actually meeting every week and saying, okay, we're gonna, we'll write stuff on our own and once a week we'll, we'll plan and get together and you know, see what we can put together. And then we realized that we had more than just a class. We, had, we definitely had enough to make you know, a, a book that we wanted to share. But in our research, we were talking about is that we kept asking the same questions in, you know, and they're in the book and we'll ask them of you. you know, and the first question is, you know, are people in general doing the best that they can? So like, just think about it. Like, when, when we said it to each other, I think I had my answer in like 10 seconds. But are people doing the best that they can? And if they're not, question two is, you know, what, what, what's holding you back? You know, from making a change that you'd want to change, make, you know, what's holding you back? And that's where we kind of give ourselves the excuses, right? The, the like, you know, oh, I don't count on time, I don't have this, whatever. And then the third question is, what's, you know, one small step that you could could do to move yourself along. And that's how we kind of got the idea of making principles, small steps to change. So, um, you know, change, you know, is when people hear the word change, I don't know, uh, does it bring about some kind of an emotion for you? Sure, you know, everybody thought when, and we were talking about the, um, when everything shut down and everybody was like, oh my gosh, everything is so uncertain. But honestly, life is uncertain. Mm -hmm. It's always been uncertain. We don't know if the fire alarm's going to go off, if you know um, the woman just got a phone call that she had to go home, something happened. We have no idea what's going to happen in the next minute. The only minute we know is the present moment. And that's when we realized Hmm, the book needs to be about change and accepting change, but we have to give people steps. So the first thing in any kind of change is self-awareness. So we want, we, we used quotes throughout the book because there are so many people that did such great work ahead of us <laughs> and we'll continue to do that. So we wanted to recognize what people had already done. So the, one of the first quotes is, be like water, Bruce Lee. You know, and everybody knows who Bruce Lee is here, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, see, if I would have said that to a, another generation, they'd be like, who's Bruce Lee? Yeah, who is that? <laughs> <laughs> so we do explain who all these people are in yep. the book. But be like water, be flexible. And if the pandemic taught us anything, it was that we had to learn to change, even if we didn't like it. Yep. And that's why we were like, this is the book. So a couple of things, I, w I just want to explain some of the things that I did in that little centering. The first thing was, of course, find a grounded position, which is core. When could you use this? I teach this to every student, every Everybody. adult. You know, that's, it's always, whenever I audition Jen and I together, we always start with the centering, whether people want it or not, we don't care. We're, we're doing it because everybody says the same thing afterwards. Oh. I feel a little different. I feel calmer. Why not? So why can't you bring that into your day? That was number one, the grounded position. When could you use that? You know, you have the eternal weight in the doctor's office. Your, um, you are, you know, I tell students, you know, you are getting ready to take an exam and the exams, you, you're, you prepared, but you're also a little nervous. Find a grounded position. There's so many times when you're, you know, your brain is stagnant, like you, you can't think about the next step and I want to be creative. Let me just stop. 
there's a practice in, there's so much peace in stillness that we just don't appreciate. Beginner's mind, I wish that was my quote, it's not. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna say it again, the beginner's mind, the possibilities are endless. In the expert's mind, they are few. Suzuki Roshi. So it is so true, people have introduced me as, oh, she's a leading expert in mindfulness in Monmouth County. No, I'm not, I'm not an expert. I wanna learn every minute of every day. And that if you approach life that way and you see oh, there's inspiration everywhere. Mm -hmm. I hope that makes sense. Yeah, because we've, we've gone every place and every one that we've worked with, we've learned something. Yeah. Like we've even taken workshops on topics that like we teach and we go, okay, well let's go because we'll probably learn one new thing. You know, and that's that's the beauty of like having that open mind. So when we're talking about making changes, like what Cindy and I said, we know so much because we've we've researched and like read so many books and gone to so many presentations and followed people's stuff. So like we wanted to to collect all the things that we've already done to put it out to people. So you know you will have the resources. So the way that our book is set up is that you know the first it's little bits at a time. So that's what I was saying to you before. It's not a fiction novel. <laughs> um, you do little bits at a time because the research behind actually making change shows you and we just passed um, what January when everyone makes their resolutions and everything and there's actually research that, that that shows that the you know 20 days or 19 or 20 days in to a new routine so it's like January 19th is actually called quitters day <laughs> it's like a, it's a thing because in the brain after 19 days it starts to get hard and so most people quit around day 19. So we don't want that. Our book and the presentations that we do, wanna, we want to have sustain, sustainable change, no matter what it is. And the way that you do that is you do little bits at a time and get, get the body and the mind used to making changes. So chapter one of the book, uh, the first chapter is all of the techniques that we use to calm the mind. So all the things that Cindy just did in the centering, um, that's all explained out breath work and how to have a grounded position and how to calm yourself down is the whole first chapter. So before you even do anything else, you actually learn that part first because that's really the most important part. So um, one of the things that I did talk about was the breathing. Yeah. So your nose, noses are for breathing, mouths are for eating and talking. Hmm. And notice your own breath. I'm just going to give you that because yep, I know yeah, you're going to need it. Notice your own breath. I said make sure your breath goes down to your belly. So if I want to calm down, I want to do a diaphragmatic breath. If my breath is just here in my chest, then I'm probably, you know, you, you've all talked to people that they're, they're almost like whispery in their, in their speech because they, they're not getting enough oxygen in. You know how they put the pulse oximeter on you now when you go to the doctor's office? Office, what are they measuring? Your oxygen. Yep. So if you want to get more oxygen to your brain, don't we all increase those cognitive abilities? Then you want to do some diaphragmatic breathing. So it's just a retraining. And you know, we we offer so many different books and TED Talks, and you know, like we did all the research for you. So if there's you are really interested in a particular um, principle in the book, we give you a lot of insight to that. So I, one of my goals is always, or our goal, is that you walk away with a little practice that you could do. So um, I hope I'm not going to knock my knife, uh, my uh, mic off, but oh, yeah. so just gently take your hands and put them up on your neck. This is called a neck pull down. So we're going to inhale really gently, bring those hands all the way down to your collarbones. And then exhale and turn your head to the left or right, doesn't matter. Great. And then you can drop your hands, shake them out. We don't give enough love to our hands. We ask so much of them, right, all day long. All right, and then put those hands back up. Doesn't matter, you can cross the same way or not. Inhale. Exhale all the way down to the collarbones and turn the head the other way. So this is a great calming method. How do you feel? A little calmer? Yes just from combining touch and breath. So I also said, you know, there were so many practices in that little three minute centering, what went well? So 
if you, those of you that work, doesn't even matter. If you don't work, it doesn't matter. At the end of the day, you write down, and I want you to write it down, what went well. So before Lewis leaves, he's gonna write down what went well. He's not gonna write down, the little kid that spilled soda all over, or this happened, or that happened, or the elevator that works does shuts down. You know, all those things that go wrong in the day, that's what we walk away with. Mm -hmm. But if you were to write down what went well, then Lewis comes in, looks at his desk, and sees there, right there, what went well yesterday, and it brings a smile to his face. Yeah. It definitely works. This is a practice, like I said, we tested out all of everything that, that's in yeah, the book. We, we tested do. on ourselves and on other people. So one year, Cindy and I were working in an elementary school and we were training all grade levels. And what we started doing this, telling the teachers that at the end of the day, before the kids get on the bus, talk about them, to t like let them talk about what went well in the day. And then about two, three weeks later, the principal calls us and says, oh, we need to talk about your workshop. And we're like, OK. And the principal was saying that she started getting phone calls from the parents saying that the kids were getting off the bus saying like, oh my god, look what went well today at school. Instead of, I have homework, and I, I fought with this kid, and the bus driver, the bus was too loud, they were coming off and saying positive things. So it, it does work. You know, your, your, the human brain is wired for negative thinking. We can't help that. It's the way we are. So if you actually ask people, yeah. like sometimes we'll say, you know, what went well today? People struggle to come up with even one thing. But if you said, well, what didn't go well? Then it's like, oh, work, and my washer broke, and the kids are driving me crazy. Like it's so easy to come up with negativity. So the way that our book is actually designed, like I told you, the first chapter is all of the techniques. You know touch points. People don't realize acupuncture, acupressure. Touch points are stress release for the body. Breath work is stress release for the body. So the first chapter is all the, the breath work techniques. Then the way that the, that the book is laid out, it doesn't matter if you have one or not, it, it just shows you we always start off with a quote. Like you said, we, and we have quotes from everybody. Yeah, all so, different walks all of All different walks of Bruce life. Springsteen, you know, Bon yeah. Jovi, yeah, but then, you know, presidents. Principles. Okay, and then each <clears throat> principle that's laid out in the book, the first thing we talk about is why it matters, because we need to know why are we, why are we presenting this to you and why is it important? So everything will have a little blurb, like with research, this is why it matters. This is the study. This is the documentation that shows that this is important. Okay, then we have a warm up. So like there's always like an intro, kind of like what we did with the centering, something that will kind of get you ready to try what we're asking, okay? And then a practice. So the practice, you know, this is the hard part. This is the work to do, but <clears throat> nothing in the book is probably would take you more than a minute or two. That's it, because we know if we said, and we, we tested this when we gave it to, we actually gave it to someone in, in, in my field, and he said, if you had said do this and these practices were taking five or 10 minutes, he said no one will read it. We know that. So, it only take a minute or two at the most. Um, then there's always, we put a little action statement, so something to kind of motivate you, like a sentence that says, why, why are we doing this? Okay, and then there's a cool down. So the cool down is almost like a, a reflection. And after each, you know, this is definitely a right, it's good that you brought your pen because this is a book where you can write in. So every, every principal has a reflection space so you can actually write in the book if you wanted to. Okay, and then we give you, like Cindy was saying, the resources. So if we reference a book and you really like it, like it's all set up in the back, it, everything's set up. So if you like this book, then we also recommend a podcast or a video or someone's talk. So you can have multi, you know, multi-dimensional ways to look at certain things. And then if you can't remember who said this or what it was, all in the back, it's all lined up in, in, in a resource guide. So I'm gonna go back to that centering one more mm -hmm. time. So I asked you to smile. So smiling raises serotonin levels. So you actually feel better. And even if you're faking a smile, Mm -hmm. The body doesn't know the difference. And after a while, you feel so silly that you actually do smile. Yep. So you know a good meditation teacher if you're in the car with them and somebody cuts them off and they don't react. They say, oh, guess they're having a bad day. I smile at them because I'm trying to, I don't want that outside external forces, people, places, things, events, to influence me and to get me in a state of emotional mm -hmm. dysregulation. So this, 
Your breath is your superpower, and your smile is your secret weapon. So, you know, you think you need a cup of coffee, or you need a Coke, or a piece of chocolate. I love all of them. That's great. Not Coke so much, but, you know, coffee and chocolate, yeah, yes. got to have it. But if you smile more during the day, and everybody hears a smiler, it's like kind of nice. Yeah. <laughs> but um, if you smile more during the day, you will have a better day. Yeah. So simple. So one of the things the, that we also feel about the book is, you know, what do you want? Do you want to elevate or escape? So what, does, what do I mean by escape? You know, so this weekend is all about gambling, right? Um, this is an the, escape weekend. This is an escape weekend. I mean, sure. Las Vegas, I'm sure that there is a, a, a bet going, that, you know, when, what time is Taylor Swift going to actually land? <laughs> that is definitely going to be a, you know. Um, I've already bet on that. Yeah. <laughs> See? Wow. Well, um, the and there down, you go. And downstairs so, it says on the board, what is today National Fried National Chicken Steak? Steak, chicken, chicken fried, fried steak, steak day. Steak. Yeah. So, you know, we are, we are, why do you think there's so many anonymous groups, right? Gambling Anonymous, Alcoholics Anonymous, Narcotics Anonymous, uh, whatever it is, uh, shopping, all of those things are elevation. Like we feel good for a minute, but then what happens afterwards? Psh, go right back down to where you were. So what we say is, do you want to elevate or escape? So, you know, if you binge Netflix, sure, you feel good while you're doing it. Maybe you don't. But then afterwards, you're still left with the same. You just wasted 10 hours, if you want to think of it that way. But if you practice some elevation uh, methods that we have in the book, the, the, um, we wanted people to leave with long-lasting results, things that were going to be continuous for them. So it wasn't just one and done. No, this is ongoing. Yeah. I can do three breaths and calm myself down anytime I want to. Anytime I want to. Yeah. And this was also born from like us being former educators and teachers, g going to workshops and you know getting great information, and then there was never any follow up. Yeah. Like we would leave, go because I know with teachers, like you, like I want something I can use tomorrow in my classroom, and we would leave and go, okay, this sounds amazing, and then come back and go, oh, like we can't really sustain this or we can't really implement this in the day. So that's not what, what, when we were creating this book, we were saying like, that's not what we're doing. We want to give people things that you can use anytime, anywhere. And you can, doesn't matter what walks of life that you, we come from the education world, but we work with everybody. And, and the foundations of what everyone is looking for are pretty much the same. You know, when we were asking people about change, you know, is, that was the first thing. Is there something that you want to change in life? We found what now two people, two out of hundreds and hundreds and hundreds that said, no, I'm good. Like everybody else said, yeah, there's probably something that yeah, I want to work on. And the two that, that were, were, were said it was good, they were like, they contemplated. They yeah, were they thought they, about it. And they're like, yeah, oh. I'm good. Yeah. I'm good. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, yay. Yay. Okay. <laughs> but you. Yeah. But what's going to happen tomorrow? I don't know. Yeah. We don't know that okay uncertainty. Right so, you know, uncertainty is our life. Yep. Uncertainty is our life. Yep. So as soon as you can start to accept that, then, you know, so, life gets a little easier. Yeah. So is, Do we have questions? Is, yeah. Is, is, is your book really uh, focused on how to deal with these uncertainties? Because, you know, yeah. part of the problem, and, and, and I've had to deal with someone in my life who was alcoholic. Mm -hmm. And one of the challenges that she would go to the AA meetings, she would feel elevated right there. But she comes out and automatically the same pressures and realities yes. still there. Yeah. Yes. So how to, how yeah. to deal with that. Right? Yes. It's just a pressure. Yeah. Even if you're just not, not alcohol, just, just our everyday Exactly. Absolutely, because That's sometimes the groups and the support is great, mm -hmm. especially like I work with substance abuse in my practice. Mm -hmm. And so lots of times you'll, you'll see people will actually tell me like if when you go to AA or you go to a rehab or you go to wherever, you, it's great because like you're in the little bubble. 
right? Like every, all of your external stressors are removed for a certain amount of time. Mm -hmm. Same with pe regular people, we go on vacation, right? You know, you, you tune out and you tune the world out and then you come back, I hear this all the time, people come back one day, coming back from vacation, they're right back where they were. Uh, it's stressed. like I never left. Like I never left, yes, so, I hear that all the time. So, so this is about how do you yeah. handle your stress? Right. Yep. How do, we all have stress in our life. Everybody has stress. But it's, how do we handle stress? Yep. So, um, and again, Jen and I, you know, we've been working together um, since 2014. Maybe it's, yeah, it's about that. Maybe it's Maybe a little longer, sooner than that. Maybe yeah. the 13 or 12, it doesn't matter. It's at least 10 years. But um, we just kind of, you know, like, we just see that it didn't matter. Like, we would do, we've actually done, run the, um, uh, the mindfulness, the mindfulness lounge. lounge for for lawyers at the at in Las, in Las Vegas in Atlantic City same thing in Atlantic City uh, when they have their conference and they would come in and you could see the stress so stress is stress it doesn't matter what your job is it's no. the way that you handle it yep. so um, and right now like like in private practice with therapy like I've been it's a perfect thing to address is I, I've had a lot of people coming in with life transitions. So, you know, people who are changing jobs, lots of college students that are going, oh my God, I'm gonna graduate in a couple months and I'm like a real person. You know, and lot, you know, job changes and relocations, everyone seems right now to be in some sort of life transition and stressful. And a lot of times what I'm hearing from people is like, oh my God, what am I gonna do in five or 10 years? Or the lawyers would say this, we had young women that would come in and say, how am I gonna do this job till I'm 50? How am I going to do that? Yeah, and crying and oh my god, how am I going to make it another twenty years in schools, like or whatever it is? And we're trying to focus on being here, present moment awareness. Like you know, stop worrying about where you're going to be fifteen years from now when you're, you got to control how you are now. And so that's why the first principle, like after chapter one, our chapter two, the first principle we start with is self awareness. You know, because you have to know yourself where you are right now. If you want to make a change, you have to be able to recognize that I need to make one. And this is what I actually, even if you don't know how to fix it, you have to be able to identify what it is that you're, that, that's troubling you and what the sources of the stress are. You know, or people that say they're anxious all the time are like, oh my God, I'm so anxious. I don't know why. You do know why. You have to stop with it and say, okay, there's always a reason why you feel a, feel a, a certain way. Back in my day, yeah. when I was working for Staples, we dealt with a lot of small business owners. Mm -hmm. And they'd be coming in to buy a printer. And before you know it, you're asking them, what kind of printer do you want? And they're telling you their whole... Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. They need no, we hear it. <laughs> stresses, most common stresses, was the fear of success. Yep. Mm. What do I do now? Oh, my God, I made it. What do I do with all this mm -hmm. new business? How do I meet this new demand? How do I do this? How do I do it? I'm not configured yet. What do I do now? And that's been one of the biggest stresses that they felt was how to deal with this new right. success of theirs. And for some people, it was enough to shut them down. Right. You know, and so dealing with that so, uh, is a big challenge for some people. It sure is. So yeah. saying, staying like, you know, with self-awareness, you know, in, in the book, if you have it, it's page 17. If you don't have it, it doesn't matter. Like, but so, so just to give you an example of how it would be laid out. So our self-awareness principle, it talks about like, you know, why it matters. And, and they give, you know, we have, we have a little blurb on, on the research on why it's important to be in the present moment. Okay, and then there's the warm up. So do you want to do sure. the warm up? So we'll just um, give you an example. Yeah, so, um, so the, and why it matters, and we fit the last statement is today the goal is to pay attention to ourselves first. Right. Instead of whatever And else our is doing. thoughts, our words, and our actions. And I'm just going to say one thing that's not quite here, but how are you feeling? You're, you know, you're talking about people being anxious. So start to say and start to ask yourself, how am I feeling right now in this moment? And I'm going to say, I am feeling whatever it is. I'm feeling anxious, I'm feeling overwhelmed, I'm feeling happy, I'm feeling safe, whatever it is, not saying I'm anxious, I'm angry. Do you see the difference? Because it's just a part of me. Because in the next few minutes, somebody walks in that I haven't seen in a long time, hi, oh now, now I'm happy. 
it changes I am feeling so that's part of self-awareness mm -hmm. to be and you know w you know we this is big with ki with students now but adults sometimes ignore how they're feeling which is so important to recognize all right so the warm-up is find a grounded position. I want everybody to do it because I know you know what a grounded position is. See what quick learners you are? <laughs> I'm so happy. Beautiful. Excellent. I don't even have to have anybody walk us through it. And then place the left hand on the belly and your right hand on your heart. And we're just going to inhale and exhale three times. So we're going to inhale to the count of four, two, three, four. And we're going to exhale to the count of six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Just a reminder, it's through the nose. Inhale, three, four, and exhale, two, three, four, five, six. And one more time. Inhale, two, three, four, and exhale, two, three, four, five, six. And while you, some of you already closed your eyes or your gaze is down, I want you to say the action statement to yourself. I will monitor my own behavior first. I will monitor my own behavior first. All right. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And then Jen's just going to tell yeah. you what the practice is. So the practice for, the, for, for this particular principle is like learning about yourself. So it says, today the goal will be to observe your reactions to external forces, such as people, conversations, and things that may not go your way. So like we talked about, if you're stuck in traffic, you're going, to, like, I have to go to shop right after this. Like, <laughs> uh. <laughs> <laughs> but we, we, we tend to get upset by external forces and things that you can't control. And, and that's the practice is to pull yourself back and stay in the present moment. Because otherwise your thoughts will just continue to spiral. And that's what happens with overthinking. You know, your brain sends like 80,000 thoughts or something a day, but and most of them aren't true. You know, so you really have to say like, is what's happening, is it a thought or is it really happening to me? But we have to keep pulling ourselves back to, you know, uh, making sure that like we are focusing on what's happening with us first. So there is no good or bad. Only thinking makes it so. Anybody know, Do you who, know said who said it? it? Who is it? Do it, wait, say it again. I'm sorry. There is no good or bad. Only thinking makes it so. Anybody know who said it? It's Shakespeare. Shakespeare. Hamlet. Yep. So, so, you, so everybody thinks that, oh my gosh, it's the phones, it's the computers, it's this, it's that, that makes us crazy, but it's not. It's human, it's, that's the 15th century, right? That that was written, and, and here we are doing the same things. Yeah. So, by the way, I'm going to forget about this, so I just want to make sure I say this. So Jen and I start, you, um, if you, you know, you buy the book, great. If you don't buy the book, you can just take a picture of the back so you have our websites. On our websites, we have, um, we have now, and we also have a YouTube channel. We'd love to have you subscribe. It's called The Elevation Principles. So in The Elevation Principles on the YouTube channel, we're going through the book. And putting out little videos Vi about yeah. The principles. So, yeah, so we you don't talk have time to and, read. Yeah. You want to listen to it in the car. Yeah. Short little videos yeah. about everything. In the Not when you're driving. Um, yeah. But uh, we we uh, so a young uh, woman in her 20s said to me, "Well, none of her friends read." And I was like, "Oh my gosh, none of your friends read." I said, "What do they do?" She said, "They watch videos." Yeah. So then I was like, I we're we going to create a YouTube yeah, channel yeah. then. Although I will say, I won't say which branch, however, <laughs> I, ta I talked to two librarians who also asked me if there was an audio book because the librarians told me we don't read. <laughs> and I said, oh, that's disheartening. <laughs> you know what it is? It's, 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 you, you can multitask when you listen to uh, an audio book. That's what it yeah. is. Yeah, and However, multitasking, that's right, is a myth yeah. because your mind can, everybody ever been to the Franklin Institute, your mind can only focus on one thing at a time. Actually, what you do is you go here and you go here. I feel like we teach kids to do this in school. It's, yep. it's, we teach them to yep. be multitaskers and multi, you want to be a monotasker. Do, you, you will be happier when you, you know when you're doing something you love, how you are totally involved in it, and it makes you so happy, 
that's when, what happens when you monotask, too. Well, in the book. <laughs> that is like a failure, though. It's a failure. So in the book, there's a little blurb called mindful or mindful, which goes <laughs> right along with this, and this is from years of us working in school districts. Well, so the first thing that we would do is talk to kids about what happens when your brain gets overloaded. So they would always tell me like, oh, like, you know, I came to school with my shirt on backwards or I wore two different shoes or, you know, like I walked down the hallway and went in the classroom and it wasn't my classroom. And then always what would happen is they say, but let me tell you what my parents do. <laughs> they would always turn on the adults, <laughs> always, and say like, I watched my dad take the ice cream out of the you know freezer and put his phone back in there. You know, he, <laughs> they woke me up on a Saturday. You know, they backed out of the car and rode over my bike. And then the instructors that were there would then say, "Well, you know, like I drove to work today and I got out of the car and I didn't remember like how, I didn't remember driving here. You know, or I walked into the room to get something and then said, "What am I doing in here?" That's right, all the time. All the time. So you mm -hmm. actually, even if it's just an archway, it's not really um, you know, a door that you're actually, you actually, if you start to say to yourself, I'm, I'm going, going in this keys. room to get my keys, yeah. you talk yourself through it. You will. You have to teach yourself, because you've been doing this. You, I mean, you're probably you're probably 25. You've been doing this since yeah. you were, you know, for 25 years. Yeah. The same things, right? But we, this is what but we can change the yeah. way we think. Yeah. It's called neuroplasticity. Yeah. Just like you train your body, you can train your mind to think differently. Mm -hmm. So you've been a great audience. Does anybody have any questions? <laughs> you know, we could go on and on and on. So well, we want everything just... that we are talking about is in it's, here. It's in the book. It's in yeah. here. Yep. And there's stories, there's research, everything yeah. that we talk about is actually here. And then the, the last thing that, you know, I want to just talk about and um, is that, you know, we go back to the gratitude practice. You know, when Cindy and I used to teach at Monmouth, one of the things we used to make our students do for part of their part of their grade was keep a journal. You know, and it could talk about like you know, you know, we always had to talk focus on what went well first. I said you can complain all you want, but you're going to tell me the good things first. You know, and even like with when my kids were little, you know, like they get off the bus and say, "Oh," I said, "How was school? Fine. What'd you learn? Nothing." You know. <laughs> And, and so then I started asking them. So I, when they would get off the bus and I would just say, okay, now tell me three good things. And at first it was like lunch, gym, and playing with friends. Okay. And then I would say, okay, tell me three good things from the day. The ladder. You didn't talk about the ladder. No, you I'll always talk the about the ladder. So the ladder, <laughs> the ladder, you know, because there's always work to do. So when we, um, when we finish the back, the last, the last ladder. So what happens is when you finish a chapter, the name of the chapter goes in the ladder. Okay, and then at the end, the publisher had called us and said, oh, you made a mistake with this, this icon because there's you know, a ladder rung and it's blank. The last one's blank, you probably did it wrong. And we said, no, we didn't because there's always room to grow. So there's always more to do. So the last you know, rung in the ladder is for you to keep going. Um, there's also things in the book, in our, in our um, you know, things that we, that we thought were really important that we put in more than once. So they also called and said, oh, you made a mistake. You put this book in three times. And we were like, nope. Because <laughs> probably the first time someone will read and be like, yeah, whatever. But if they see it the third time, they're going to go, oh, maybe they mean that I really should look at this. So there was a lot of things. But the publishing, really, for us, once we, you know, and my, my girlfriend, who's the editor, also said, today, most people don't write their own yeah. work. I mean, let's think about it. We know some people that put out books, and you're like, did how they actually did, how write did that? she write that? She <laughs> said most people, she calls and interviews them, and they tell her their story, and then she writes it. But we actually wrote our own stuff and gave it to someone. And, and then, it took us over a year. It took us a year and a half, but we yeah. committed to doing it little bits at a time, you know, because yeah. we both have jobs and we're both working. And then when we were really specific, we have a lot of information in a book, and, it, and we, we wanted invite so we, we wanted inviting fonts and little bits of things so it looks like what we're giving you is easy even though it's not because like you'll look at it and go oh that looks like let's try it it just doesn't look scary so there was a lot of work to do with that but honestly for us the publishing and the editing it wasn't it wasn't that hard to no. do because we knew but we knew what we wanted yeah. but they also make suggestions and yeah. I, and I would say to you definitely have an editor because yeah. We didn't even, as many times as we read it, 
you, you didn't catch your own mistakes, yes. you and know, and example, she read it, I read it, and yeah, then, you, you know. You don't catch your mistakes, and like I said, we have quotes from everyone in the book, and like we, like we said, be like water, you know, oh, that's Bruce Lee, and she was like, yeah, but like, some a fourth grader is not going to know who he is. Not that the books are a fourth no. grader, but even but a, even said, a twenty year old yeah. might not You're know who Bruce Lee is. You're going to have to go back and and research and put in who everyone is. And we were like, oh, okay, because <laughs> like, we didn't think about it. You know, like yeah. we have a quote from you know Bruce Springsteen, like somebody else, maybe somebody's going to be like, who's that? I don't know. But we had to make we, we wouldn't have known to do that. Um, plagiarism. There's a, a program that the publishers and the editors will continually run through the book. So it will come up like, okay, you have a 5% chance that like something might be plagiarism as opposed to 80%. Like maybe you wrote something, you didn't quote it or cite it enough. So those are the other things that we And they know. did all the citing too. I don't know that you'll have that yeah. because yours is a little different than yeah. ours, but, but she may have a suggestion the way that you present your memoirs. Yep. We'll give you so. all the contact information. Oh, yeah. I, would, I would love that. I do, it, I do have an editor and oh. she oh, good. over and over again. It's a book that I started 10 years ago, True Healing, you know, and it, it was just good. me alone, but it was a story that other people heard and said, oh, you should write a book. I see you know, this and this in God's time, you know, because at that time it was all anger, you know, and so now, you know, fast forward in the last year with a friend of mine, she's not a professional editor, but she's a, she has written books. You know, never put it out there, and uh, yeah. and we just worked on it in the last uh, year. You know, just to okay, you know what, we got to take that out. You know, and it's all it's my story, you know, and I'm not an English major, so it, like the way I talk, it's the way it comes. And but she put it in a way where it's understandable yep. for a reader to let it flow, and uh, and so now it's like you know with the publishing, it's like do you go hybrid? Do you? I mean, I've heard about Amazon. I was like. I don't even, I can't, I don't even know anything about laptops, you know, in that sense. So, um, I did get in touch with a few publishers, interview, okay, okay, sounds good, whatever, whatever, and just submit it for free, you know what I mean? So, I've submitted to about five different publishers this past week, that to me is a, a step. Not, and I just, it's just, uh, like I said, uncharted, I, I would like to do it with someone that I could trust and that is, that's good that I could trust. Mm -hmm. yeah. We'll give you information, people to call. So that's, and then you can see we had we had an easy experience, mm -hmm. pretty much. Yeah, yeah, we did. So we if did. we can do it, anybody could do it. <laughs> you don't know anything about writing a book. Sure. Yeah, and it's all on the back of the book too. Okay. But thank yeah. you all for your yeah. time. Thank you. Hope you enjoy you this beautiful day. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'd like to get a book for me. Yes. Oh yeah, yeah love yeah. it. Yeah. yeah, great. All right. And what a gorgeous day to be outside. This is the first author time of the year. Good. Oh. Yep. Yes. More up. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming. Yeah. I'm working with Maureen Spataro on her writer's block affair. And uh, for that we're doing for uh, for her in and the last time she had it, I think you guys were part of that. Right? We were. It wasn't really well run. I'm going to tell you that. She was telling me some of the issues well, that they had. Well, they, they had us upstairs. And nobody's going to go three flights of stairs to see. We, we actually left after. Oh, uh, really? Uh, it was that. Yeah. yeah look, ask her. Okay, okay. Oh, my gosh. Well, we're, I mean, we're having ours at Taylor Pavilion over the boardwalk. Oh, see, now that's a much better place. Yeah, much better. A much better place. Yeah. I mean, it just wasn't. It was. We're doing away with the speaking. We're doing away with the face painting and all this other stuff. The focus is all just on, on books. Just on books. Just on the authors. Uh, great location. It is a great Very location. Simple, straightforward presentation. We, uh, Maureen and I had really. She told me about the ups and downs that, that you guys experienced. That the place wasn't really that helpful to you guys. Oh no 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 no. I mean, they made it difficult. You know. Yeah. So yeah, no, it was not. Yeah, not. Not. Yeah. not no, yeah. no, no. So, so we're, we're hoping uh, we're hoping this time around it'll come better. And yeah, well. yeah. No, good luck. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you, right there. Well, with you doing and helping, you know, and I guess like you know, she had a great idea. It just wasn't the right. If it was downstairs, yeah. it would have been fine. Mm -hmm. Right. You're but not going to no, get. There were there was a competing event. We and we saw elderly women coming in, and they were like. 
I'm not walking up those three flights of stairs. Do you know what those stairs are like there? Oh, yeah, I know. It's the old high school. <laughs> yes, yes, school. yes, exactly, exactly. So. The, uh, little oh, yeah, 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 sure. Yes. Awesome. All right, thank, thank you. you so much. Oh, no problem, thank you. Well, what did you think? It went well. It said, I hear one Tell me something you learned. Tell me an act of kindness you did. And I would ask them every day. My son, my older son's going to college this year. And, some, and they, if I didn't do it, they go, Mom, you didn't ask me. You didn't ask me my three good things. So it changes. Like the gratitude practice, it, it does work. So if you focus your mind on what you get to do and not what you, oh, I have to do this. I have to go to work. I have to take the kids here. I have to do this. If you can say, like, okay, I get to do these things. Like Cindy and I were like, we were driving here. We're like, we get to come here. Yeah. We were like, we were so excited to be here. If one person comes, okay. If 20 people come, okay. Yeah. And what do we do? Walk, we're going to do the look same at this thing. building. It's so beautiful. <laughs> we're so glad to be here. Yeah. You know, so yeah. you have to change your perspective on, you know, because it's, it, it's, life is stressful and it's very easy to spiral in that and, and become that like, ugh, yeah. that very stagnant feeling. So you have to change, change the way that you do things. And one thing uh, I do in my own gratitude practice is I always look every day, I write down the next day. So in, I do it in the morning and I write down who inspired me. Mm -hmm. Because then I have to look for who inspires me all day long. I'm like, hmm, you know, like what happened during my day that inspired me? So, you know, because there's so much, there's so many people that you meet during the day that actually say something, you know, and today, Believe it or not, it was the men collecting the garbage. They always wave to me because I'm walking my dog at the same time, and he's like, oh, do you want me to take that poop bag? I'm like, yeah. So my dog goes up to the, um, the, one of the guys, and I said, oh, do you like dogs? He goes, why not? Why not? Isn't that a beautiful statement? I was like, yes. That's my inspiration today. Yeah. Why not? Yep. What I find most amazing about this is that it's it's also self empowered. Yes. Yep. Because if when, when people feel powerless in this world, the first thing they can take power over is themselves. Yes. And once you learn how to take control of yourself, you now can start taking control and change for all the negative things around you. Yeah. Lewis, would you like to write the next book with us? <laughs> yeah. We are working on the next one. Yes. Uh, thank you so much. I'm so. Uh, Grateful. I am grateful to be here. There's no mistake for me being here. My intention of being here is that I had just finished writing my memoir. And oh, I'm like, oh, congratulations. Oh. And, when, and so here I'm in this new territory, uncertain territory for yep. me. Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, what do I do? Go to the library, go to the bookstores, get networking. You know, this, is, this is like really... New. I'm not educational. I'm just. Uh, I was a former Catholic nun. Okay. Yeah. But anyway. Wow. That's a great, great <laughs> yeah. story. Wow. Yeah. I, yeah. I want to yeah. read it. I was, I was <laughs> say, hey, maybe a year or two, whenever it's published, and just to get some insight of what it means to be an author, what it means to reach out, publish. You know what? Because I didn't realize there's so many publishers out there, and they kind of like it's like uncertainty. Who do I trust? Who do I like this? But. I'm putting that aside, but that was my reason of being here. Well, we and can help you. <laughs> yes. Talk to you about that. But yet, uh, what you both are sharing with this book that I will be getting, uh, I didn't expect this. I did not. Uh, because uh, all reminders in my, in my life and what I've learned, I'm in a 12-step program for about 10 years. I know what it's like to yeah. go into the meeting to be elevated. But I also know what it's like if I don't go to those meetings and I don't surround myself with those, you know, mind-liking people, that I would be depleted. You yeah. know, I would be back into the, because it's all about practice. That's yes, practice. it is. It's practice. 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 And we don't always That's what have we say the support too. everywhere. You need <laughs> no. to have, it has to be here. Yeah. And the first, and the way to have that support in any kind of program or anything is that you have to be aware that you need that help. Yep. Awareness is that, hey, you know, I need help. Yeah. I need help. You and know, there's no shame to that. Everybody yeah. needs help. And we all need help. <laughs> we don't like change. <laughs> no. Nobody likes I mean, Nobody likes program, change. Program, nobody likes change. No, it doesn't. And uh, so I just want to thank you, ladies, for, and I do believe it's God's design behind your work and, and what you're sharing, what you've experienced, and, and God's design for me to be here to hear this, you know, to get that encouragement to, uh, 
to be like, oh yeah, I forgot about that mindfulness of all those techniques. And, and, and for me, your book and your share is adding into the person I am today. Will we continue to add, if that makes sense. It's like part of my, you know, I get this from here, this of from Of course, here. that's how it's we do journey. it. It's a journey. Yeah, it is a journey. Uh, and, and it's just, I don't know what God is doing, but anyhow. I do. I want to. I want to thank you. And then maybe after after that, you could maybe give me some tips because, like I said, this is uh, form to me. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Well, we'll now, we have a my publisher and an editor. And an editor. Yeah. My office is literally around the corner, and um, every month Cindy teaches a meditation yeah. class. And the, the next one is actually Monday night. So Monday night wants at to come 6 o'clock. An hour of practice. Um, I charge $10. Um, you know, anybody well, everybody's can come. Everybody's welcome. Yeah. You don't need any experience. Nope. You're not sitting on the floor. <laughs> yeah. And then after that, so this. Started, and then I'm also teaching a mindfulness a, a, meditation a course. course. So last year. In March. We, we ran a course in October, and Cindy did a morning session and an afternoon session. It was a round of four. And people had no idea what to do. And then by the end, they were so into it, they said, can we just keep going through the winter? Because it's like, ah, oh, you know. So we've been running them every single month since, since then. So Monday night is going to be, we'll send the flyers here or whatever. Maybe we can print them out. Um, we, we have a Monday night drop-in class on, my, on my, this coming Monday. And then the series will be. N not the 12th, uh, the, 19th, the 19th. The 19th, I'm sorry. And then we're doing a Stop the March Madness <laughs> <laughs> meditation series. So that's going to be on um, four, four. The four Mondays, four in, Mondays March in March from March. 6 to 7. Yep. But if you want to come, bring a friend. Lots of people come and bring their mom or bring their, and they go out to dinner afterwards. It's, it's just an hour, and you will definitely learn something. And my office is a very beautiful, peaceful yes, space. Yes, it's beautiful. So it'll be a good hour for you to be able to sit. So bring a friend. And of course, Jen is, you know, if you were looking for a new therapist or, <laughs> or a start therapy, she's the one. I'm close. I'm around the corner. So. Yeah. But thank you all for coming. Yes. Again, oh my gosh, it was really. I, I really okay. appreciate it. Thank you. Oh, so much. thank you. <laughs> Bring your friends. Yeah. Giselle, she's our intern. Oh, how nice. <laughs> thank you, Giselle. I saw a little applause. I'm like, yes, yeah, that's great. Yeah, that's great. That's thank great. So. I'm glad you do that to support the community. Yep. So, anybody has any questions or whatever? Yeah. <laughs>